It is rough on the bottom of that racetrack. He drove right through the bumps and right by him, and caution is out. Only one lap of green, yellow flag waving again. Our first wreck of the day, Yako Korea in the 11 car gets into the wall. That's a tough hit. He's really crumpled up the right front corner of the Liquamali Chevrolet. So Korea from Northwest State here in South Africa. Looks like his day is going to be done a little early. Got a replay for you. Take another look at what happened to Korea because we're on board here. Down into the corner. Car gets a little bit loose. That's the danger zone. It gets free in the back end. He goes around, whack into the wall. Welcome to a super speedway. Yeah, really. The South Africans participating have never been on a super speedway. They've run short tracks, maybe a road courses, a whole different world for these drivers. Now in trouble on lap 75, the caution will wave. Danny Correa, one of the local drivers from Belkham, has gone around, stalled it on the racetrack, part of a two-car spin over there. Take another look at what happened. Mark Ebert from the USA in that white 97 car went around as well. Nobody hit anything, and it looked like they hit each other. Well, a little bit of side-by-side. -side. You either take the air off, or maybe just a little bit of a bump, and you both end up going around. Rewinding time for second. Bodine on the inside. Mickel there in the white. Oh, oh. trouble again. The 97 car goes around the Fizulu plant car. That car's been in trouble here before today. Caution out again on lap 105. Take another look at what happened. Gets up in the gray there. That's not a good place to be. Ebert was way up where he wasn't supposed to be. Picks up a little bit of that dust. You get that on your hot tires. There's no grip whatsoever. He's chasing it down the straightaway, trying to get it back under him. Finally loses it in the middle of the straightaway. Mark Ebert from Tucson, one of our ASA drivers from that part of the country in the U.S. Making the long trip over here to make the start in this historic event, the first Free State 500. The ASA Transcontinental Series owns the Drive Tech Driving School. Did a lot of instruction over there in the Phoenix area. All right, let's get a break in. We'll come right back with more at Belt. Winning races anywhere, anywhere in the world is awesome, but to be the first guy, that is really cool. Five wide on the front stretch, heavy traffic rush hour here at Pekisa Freeway. Richardson out of shape down into turn one. Sean Richardson, who'd been leading laps earlier, loses it, goes around in the 98, brings out the yellow with 31 to go. Ah, oh, tough break for the Australian driver who's had such a great day. Wow, it's almost like a tire went down or, or, or he was sliding in oil. That car went around way too fast. Sometimes you get just a little bit too much rear brake and he just tapped on him and the car went around. Does it look like the left rear is down or going down on that car? It just stepped out. I was impressed. A guy who has not raced these cars on this kind of racetrack before, he kept that thing from going up the racetrack. And, and that was, yeah, he got the car to start spinning, got back in the gas, got the car to come all the way around. You're very, I think you're right. I think the left rear tire started to go down. All right, so Richardson from Australia, from Queensland, brings the 98 onto pit road. Of course, Australia has a great history of racing, but not this kind of racing. Uh, pit crew going to work. They're going to change tires. How about it, Todd Lewis? Left rear being changed on the number 98 of Sean Richardson. Had that spin going into turn number one. Now the motor's off. He may have damaged it in that spin, fellas. 